after showing images of the results of ischemia in term infants, both in the acute and partial prolonged ischemia, I will now show images of the results of ischemia in premature infants. And this pattern is called periventricular leukomalacia, but not only the periventricular white matter is involved, so the term white matter injury of prematurity is a more correct term. There are also other terms that refer to the same entity, such as punctate white matter lesions, and when it comes to MRI, diffuse extensive high signal intensity, or DASHI. And this entity is not only the result of ischemia, but there's also an inflammatory component that plays a role. On imaging, you see increased signal intensity of the white matter. This is a 28 week old neonate that had been delivered early with a C-section because of maternal problems. And on the first MRI one day after birth, there's increased signal intensity in the unmyelinated white matter and a cyst near the caudate nucleus. At 32 weeks, with a little bit more gyration of the brain already, there was increase of the abnormal signal intensity and persistence of the cyst. And the same infant was imaged at term age again, and then the cyst isn't visible anymore, but there's diffuse loss of the white matter, and sometimes you can also see that the border of the ventricular system has become undulated because of the white matter loss. Premature infants are especially prone to white matter injury because the brain has a suboptimal autoregulation, because the infants still have a patent ductus and unripe lungs, so they are at high risk for cardiovascular and pulmonary events. When it comes to the brain, the blood supply in the premature infant goes to the gray matter structures first. So there's blood supply from the basal penetrators that later are the lenticostriatal vessels that go to the basal ganglia and the Blood vessels that come in from the surface go to the cortex first. The white matter injury might be diffuse or more focal with the formation of cysts when it's more severe. And in the white matter of the premature infants are precursors of oligodendrocytes. And the oligodendrocytes are the cells that provide provide the myelin around the axons. And these immature oligodendrocyte precursors are especially prone to ischemia and they go to an inflammatory state because of the ischemia and release glutamate which leads to more excitation of the neurons and then the neurons become exhausted and there's more damage to the neurons because of the environment with a lot of glutamate. These precursors of the oligodendrocytes have also recently been described to play a role in multiple sclerosis, and I'll come back to that later. What's interesting, if you see the precursors of the oligodendrocytes, is that they form kind of a synapse with the axons, they're living cells, so it's not the case that the oligodendrocyte forms myelin and then remains in a resting state and doesn't do anymore, no, it are living cells. And there are also synapses between the oligodendrocytes and the precursors of the oligodendrocytes and the axons of the neurons. 
And in this image, you can also see that the axons from the neurons coming from the cortex to the thalamus go straight from the cortex to the thalamus, whereas the axons from the neurons from the thalamus that go to the cortex, they have a stop at the subplate. The white matter injury can also be evaluated by ultrasound, which is much more convenient in a premature infant at the neonatal ICU. And what you see on ultrasound is that the white matter has an increased echogenicity and it should not be higher than the choroid plexus. So if the white matter is more echogenic than the choroid plexus, it's leukomalacia. If you see the formation of cysts, you know it for sure. And the last thing I want to mention about PVL is that in the chronic stage, there's not only loss of white matter, but also of the thalamus and brainstem without signs of scarring. Periventricular lycomalacia occurred in about half of premature infants in 2001, but with the advances in medicine, it has decreased to one in five nowadays. Thanks for watching, and until next time, when we will discuss another entity that occurs in premature infants, namely intraventricular hemorrhage.